That might well uh, we've got another short um, interview clip uh, with a former nurse uh, called Debbie Evans uh, she was talking to me over the weekend about the dangers of swabs and uh, well I really paid attention to what she was uh, saying let's let's hear what she said and what her precise warning so but these swabs are with respect up the nose swabs well, these, with respect the, to uh, testing uh, these are to do with the throat but particularly the nasal swabs in relation to COVID-19 you were warning quite some time ago that uh, there were concerns around the use of these deep um, nasal swabs for the COVID tests. For people who've got no medical experience at all, tell us a bit about what's actually going on and why you've got those concerns. Well, I've had, as you know, Brian, I've had the concerns right from the get go, really. Um, I'm a trained um, state registered nurse. I trained back in the old days in the 70s um, and I specialised in ear, nose and throat, both on a, a clinical um, setting and within a, a theatre setting as well. So I know what nasopharyngeal swabs are and I know how potentially dangerous they can be. And even as an ENT trained nurse, I would not feel comfortable without specific training um, supervised by uh, an ENT surgeon or an ENT consultant, I wouldn't feel safe in performing a nasopharyngeal swab. And, and the reason is, is because it's very invasive. And I don't know why we're using six inch, six inch swabs that go right at the back of the throat and right inside the nasal cavity. Um, especially in healthy people when we don't need to. And I think what's important to to note about the anatomy and the physiology of, of the head is that each nose is different, as we know, by looking at people. And noses have different ridges and bumps inside them. So no, no body is the same. You know, everyone is unique. And at the top of your palate is something called the cribriform plate. It's very, very delicate. It's a midline bone and it's really important both to the skull and what well, other people know the skull as the cranium and the nose. And, and what it does is it's, it's a bit like um, a mesh. It's not like a long bone, like you think, you know, the femur would be. It's like a mesh bone. So the olfactory nerves pass right through this. It's really delicate, really, really fragile. And if you damage it, it can be extremely serious because it's really, I guess, putting it in layman's terms, it's the gateway to the brain. Um, it's 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 the partition that kind of closes your brain off to the rest of, of your head. So it's, it's really, really delicate. And these swabs are very long. And I've spoken to people that have had swabs stuck down the back of their throats. And then the same swab has been stuck up their noses and turned around, um, twisted, and, and held there for 15 seconds. Now, what's, what I'm struggling with is why we need to use these invasive tests, because there are actually papers that have been published to say that saliva is more sensitive for SARS-CoV-2 in COVID-19 patients than nasopharyngeal swabs. And that was a paper that was published back in April 2020 by Anna Wiley et al. So my question is, is why are we needing to use these swabs and what could be on the swabs? What are we introducing into the body when we don't actually need to?